Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 28 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about that from Salesforce to Snapchat, every top app relies on the cloud nowadays. And if you want to work in this niche, the AWS Cloud Development Bundle is the perfect place to start. And make sure you stay until the end to get Dave's top three tips regarding AWS Cloud training for your organization and for yourself. Hi, Dave. It's great to see you. And welcome back to another Cloud Computing Training Show. Yeah, it's great to be here. And what's interesting about this article was really the fact that uh, people are getting to all kinds of different uh, pay models in terms of how they're uh, getting uh, development out there. You know, AWS is giving, the, is giving uh, training away. Um, you know, to people who are getting out of college or people who want to get back into the business and other people are doing the same thing. And this thing basically is saying you pay for, you know, you pay, for, you pay where you want, you know, for the training at this shop, this pop size shop sort of thing, which is, which is interesting. Uh, it, again, it depends on how, how good the training is uh, or else they may find their model isn't working with them. It's going to be working against them. But it also kind of opens up the uh, uh, other training uh, providers to, in essence, kind of meet this in the middle. And I think that's going to be great. Yeah, it really is. So, I mean, how do you see this AWS Cloud Development Bundle working? I mean, you know, do you think it's a model that will be replicated through Azure, through Google, AliCloud, that sort of thing? Do you think it will be a, a model that takes off? I can't imagine any of those guys would would uh, let people pay what they want for stuff. Um, that's that doesn't seem like a uh, a very uh, fixed price model. I got to remember these folks have to even if they give it away or they're charging a hundred bucks a course or whatever, they have to put uh, details behind their expenditures to develop these courses. And so if I'm going to develop this course and it's for free, then I can go ahead and estimate the amount of money I'm going to make, which is going to be zero, but I'm going to get some. Uh, backside, upside from the uh, uh, from the people who would leverage my technology or basically would be hired by my my uh, public cloud computing company, or they're going to get some revenue from the training, which basically everybody's out there trying to do that right now in certain aspects, certifications and things like that. That a lot of the big public cloud providers are providing those are those are cash cows for them. They're they're able to produce lots of people are able to get certifications that they can turn into a very high paying job, but it's going to cost you some money to get those certifications and go through the certification process. And I kind of like this is you say, Hey, let's look and take our training and, you know, here's the can, you know, you know, put whatever, you know, dollars or coin in it. You think that, uh, you know, it's going to be, uh, you, that you deserve. I remember this and actually in, in your city, Melbourne, one time I went to a coffee shop that was in a uh, office building. And the guy was serving coffee and I asked him how much and the guy said, whatever you want to give me. And uh, people were putting, you know, dollars and, you know, and I thought that wasn't a bad model because guess what? I paid him more for the coffee than it was probably worth. Um, and because I thought it was good coffee and I'm sure he made a lot of money that way. And he was just kind of making his business that way. So he, he didn't have a price list or anything else. You ordered what you wanted, a flat white, and uh, you know, put five dollars Australian on the table and moved on. And that was probably a little bit more than I should have been paying for a flat white back then. And but uh, it's there's some value to this kind of a creative model. It's just very difficult to implement when you're a uh, big, publicly traded, um, you know, cloud company, which all of them are. Yeah, exactly right. And you, you, you weren't far off, actually. Five dollars is, is pretty much give or take uh, 50 cents or so, the going rate for a, for a, for a relatively nice flat white. So that's, uh, you, you weren't too far off the mark. So Maybe, maybe I ripped them off. So it's probably a six dollar cup of coffee. I gave him five bucks. So. I think that, that kind of business model where you've got an audience as well, like a queue behind you, and suddenly you're buying a coffee for 50 cents or something. It's more of a, more of a guilt trip. <laughs> Well, I mean, this is, uh, you know, thinking out of the box. I love this kind of stuff just because it's interesting and I'd love to see how they're going to do with it, you know, going forward. Um, this really kind of goes down to, is the training any good? You know, if it's, it's got to be good or else you're not going to pay them for it. So uh, the, the onus is on them to provide good training. And if they don't, uh, people typically aren't going to pony up uh, any kind of money for it. And so I think they're, they're putting it out there and basically you know, taking some risks and saying, we're good at our training, this is what we're gonna do, and if we're not, we're not gonna make any money. So therefore, you know, put your trust in us and come get trained by us and uh, pay for pay for, pay for for what you want to, want to pay for. And we'll go ahead and take that. 
So five dollars for a flat white, five dollars for a for a uh, cloud course. Yeah, it seems very cheap. But you're right. I mean, look, these things do have to have an intrinsic value to the individual. And sometimes you, you need to get a, a decent cost to that. And I think we covered something interesting in the C-suite show this week as well, where, you know, I think the final tip of that, of your three tips there was uh, failing fast and, 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 you know, picking yourself up quickly. And I, I certainly think that, you know, there, there's going to be some key indicators with offering this sort of AWS bundle on a, a, a pay as, as much as you like uh, opportunity to, to fail fast or, or equally recognize that that it's failing fast and you need to turn it around quickly. Uh, because, I mean, you know, we both were talking off camera actually about the, the rate of pay for a certified AWS uh, specialist within within cloud is, is, is averaging out about 120,000 US dollars at the moment a year. So, I mean, it's it's paying reasonably well in that in the cloud environment, um, if not better than obviously some roles that were sort of, it's, it's picked at the post because it's becoming that bit popular. But like you pointed out, that could be declining with the, the, the gold rush, as it were, of AWS you know, certification. So it's becoming a very interesting marketplace with regards to you know, paying as much as you want for a course that can obviously give you back a lot of value, isn't it? Yeah, it does. It, it, it is a, a huge uh, payback for a very little investment when you consider what certification is. I mean, we go to college for uh, you know, four years or you know, if we get a master's degree, more than that. And uh, it, it doesn't really give us that, that direct you know, benefit directly from our college education. And we, we, and we get out there, we think we know everything, and we don't. We end up having to learn on the job. And this allows us to, in essence, get the direct knowledge we need to do something that's tactical in nature, AWS skills in this case, but it's really valuable uh, to folks out that are looking for those skills. And we saw this over the years lots of times in you know, Cisco, Cisco network certified uh, SEs that were around for a while and the ability to do uh, Nobel, you know, engineers and the ability to kind of get into these spaces where there was a sudden need for certified personnel. We understood it was going to be for a short period of time before other things occurred in the technology space and other things basically popped up as being more important. But you could probably ride a public cloud certification, whether it's Azure, AWS, Alibaba, you know, Google Cloud Platform, for the next five to ten years, um, just because they need those skills. And if you're willing to develop and improve those skills going forward, it's money in the bank. And so, I, my advice to people who are, you know, quite frankly, looking to re-engineer the, their career or pivot from one technology to another, is go get cloud certified. If you're, you're interested in that, you ask me something you have a passion for. Um, but you're, you're going to be able to double your salary and uh, make a lot of money and uh, work for you want to work for. And I think there's there's good power in that. Truly is. There truly is. 100 percent. And like like we always talk about passion and, and drive and being true to yourself. I think they're the core, the core essence of finding that elusive happiness sometimes at work that some people never, never actually get to. So look, it's moved us on really nicely to um, at your three tips, Dave. So um, would you like to give us your top three tips with regards to AWS training for the individual and the organization? Yeah, I mean, number one is training should be by value, you know, not who's doing the training. Uh, so ultimately, whether you're getting it from AWS, you know, Lynda.com, which the people I recorded videos for, Cloud Academy, or, or these guys, uh, you know, this would really be who's able to provide you with the enabling learning that you're able to take on the job and be successful with, and also who's able to provide you with the certifications you need to show an employer, because quite frankly, they're not going to be able to quiz you on your AWS skills so you can get the job that you can be successful with and get paid. So cost is really kind of a secondary consideration. I wouldn't pay, you know, $100,000 for a course. That's ridiculous. But, you know, ultimately this is about investing in you or investing in your employees more likely. And so cost should be a secondary consideration, not the primary consideration. If it's a primary consideration, you're typically going to pick the wrong training. Never try to economize on training if it means reducing quality. And that kind of, kind of goes to the same uh, tip that we just went over. But... I see this all the time where we're trying to um, get free training. We're trying to get uh, uh, training that's delivered by uh, second rate training companies. Uh, we're not using the right CBT providers, computer based training providers, and therefore we're not giving the quality of training. And so ultimately, Think about quality and think about costs. And then finally, make sure to consider all sources, not just a single provider. Um, people tell me all the time that I take classes on Cloud Academy, I take classes on Linda, I take classes from AWS to do some certification work, I take classes from Microsoft Azure, 
And I think that's great. That's the way to do it. You really get a good exposure across different training platforms in terms of different expertise and different ways in which we're teaching courses and also different technologies. And I think people who do that are going to be more valuable to me than people who just focus on AWS certification only or focus on lynda.com or focus on Cloud Academy. Uh, they're willing to diversify their training around to different sources. And they're able to, by that, by doing that, able to kind of tell me who does the best in training and what, what, how, how do they learn best, and you know, really give me some good data points as a trainer, in terms of how I can teach them better and what's interesting to them, so I can change my behaviors as well as by reacting to their feedback. That's really, they're, they're really great tips, Dave. Thank you so much for giving that. There's so much value there for people to point them in the right direction and to, you know, make sure they're they're making the right investment with, you know, following their passion. It's very important. You got to follow your passion, man. Great. And thanks for being part of the training show this week. As always, absolute pleasure. It's always good to be here, man. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is Nelson underscore Hilliard. Below are all the links for that as well. So uh, you haven't got to do that in the search too much. And uh, you remember to like, comment and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks again for watching.